All right, check. Systems are go here. Systems are go there. Guys, what's happening? It is 2022. If you are brand new to my channel, my name is Jay Yadlovsky, and here we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve. We give you tips. We give you tricks. We learn how to do all kinds of different things in Resolve. I do love me some audio. Got lots of good audio stuff if that's what you're looking for, but we talk about a little bit of everything here in Resolve. We also get into talking a little bit about some gear stuff because, hey, we all need gear to do this YouTube thing. And I just kind of share some tips and tricks about my YouTube journey because a lot of you guys are also on the same journey that I'm on. And you know what? We're just trying to figure this out together. So if any of that stuff sounds kind of interesting to you, I would love to have you be part of the community. And you can do that just by hitting that little subscribe button. There's one down in the corner. I think it's over there. Really appreciate it. And I would love to have you as part of the community. But today we're talking about subtitles. Now, at the end of last year, I made a quick tip Tuesday where we talked about subtitles a little bit and how you can have the background of your subtitles auto adjust, kind of like you see on the screen down here. And a lot of you guys were interested in how to actually create the subtitles. So we're gonna go through all that today in Resolve, how to create the subtitles, how to put them on your video, how you can create them outside of Resolve using a text file, bring them in. And I'm actually gonna have a free file for you guys to download as a template if you wanna use that to create your subtitles outside of DaVinci Resolve and then bring them in. How to burn them in there if you want them to be there all the time or how you might wanna upload them separate to YouTube with your videos so that way people have the options to turn them on and off. So. With that said, guys, welcome to 2022. It still feels like 1999 to me. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Eh? 2022. I can't believe it. So let's just jump into Resolve and get this year off on the right foot here. All right. So jumping into Resolve here, I'm going to grab my headphones. Otherwise, I can't hear nothing. So get my headphones on here. Now, the first thing we want to do is start by adding in a subtitle track. Now, how do we do that? Pretty easy. I've already got a timeline set up. I've got the sequence of clips that you saw in the intro here. That's what we're going to be working with and adding in the subtitles for. So I have my timeline set up and now I need to add in a subtitle track. Now you can have multiple subtitle tracks. However, you could only work with one subtitle track at a time. So let's go ahead and add in our first track here. So I'm going to just come down to my timeline. I'm going to right click here and we have add subtitle track. Easy as that. That's what I want to do. Go ahead and click on that. Now, once you have your subtitle track, it's going to appear on top of your audio and video tracks. You can make adjustments to your window here to view it easier by pulling this up and down. And you notice that uh, kind of squishes down my video track. You can play with these guys a little bit, you know, adjust them to whatever meets your needs, whatever looks good and is easier for you to work with on the screen. Now, if you did want to create another subtitle track, all you have to do again is right click you can add another subtitle track. Now you will see your multiple subtitle tracks listed, but as we get into it here, I'll show you that you can only use and see on screen one of these subtitle tracks at a time. Because say you have different languages, we're doing English, German, Spanish, French, whatever. You can only work with one language at a time. So that's why you can only see one track active on the screen at a time, but you can add in as many as you want. So for me, I mean, I'm just gonna do English because that's all I know is English. So we're gonna just do English. So I'm gonna rename my track here to English subtitle. So just a little bit more information here about this subtitle track. You do have options similar to the options we have uh, down here in our audio and video tracks. And looking right here, you can lock the track. You have your auto track selector, which allows you to effect and make changes to that track. If you don't wanna make any changes, you can go ahead and turn that off. And then you also have the disable subtitle track right here so you can turn it on and off if you want to see it or if you want to turn it off for a while that's fine too and that's how you would do that so i'm going to come all the way back to the beginning and uh what i want to do is add in a, a subtitle track so pretty easy the first thing you want to do is uh, come up to your effects library right here i'm going to go ahead and close my media pool in our effects library we want to come down to titles and in titles here we can come and scroll all the way down to the bottom and we have subtitle. Now the subtitle preset here, it's a uh, special kind of subtitle text. You don't want to use just the regular text that are all up here or, you know, even at the top here, you've got your plain text or scrolling or whatever. You don't want to use that. You want to come down here and grab the subtitle text. So you can click on this and drag it and drop it onto the subtitle track that you want it to be on. So for me right here, boom. That's where I want to put it. And now you can see on the screen here, we do have the word subtitle. And if we click on our subtitle clip and we have our inspector open. So right here is my inspector. You want to open that up. Now we've got a whole bunch of different options of things that we can uh, do, that we can change, that we can add in our text of the subtitle. Like what do we want it to say, right? 
So let's just take a quick look and run over the window here in the inspector so you guys kind of know what you're looking at. So like I said, make sure you have your clip selected and you're in the video tab here. I guess you can click on file, but I don't need that. So on the video here, we're going to start with caption right here. Now, right here, it's going to tell me where does my caption come in and where does it go out? And this is basically just the length of your clip. So if I come down into my timeline and I grab this and I shorten it up a little bit, now, if I come up here, you see it's uh, one second, 1 1.21 seconds, 1.21 gigawatts. <laughs> Back to the future, great movie. Anyway, 1.21 seconds. So however long your subtitle clip is, that's what's gonna show up here. And I'm gonna show you how you can adjust the default settings for that in a second. But uh, right now we're just, let's finish running over this window. Next down here, we have subtitle. This is gonna be the text that we wanna use. So uh, let's just watch a second of this and see what I say maybe up to uh, this point. I'm gonna. Pull this out and let's see if we can fit whatever I say into this subtitle right here. So let's see what I said. All right, check systems are go here. Systems are go there. All right, so in order to add it in, just double click in here and I'm gonna type in exactly what I heard. I heard, and I'm, you may have to listen to it a few times if this is the way that you're doing it. There's gonna be different ways to do it. I'm gonna have some uh, tips or tricks of how you can you know, get these subtitles done a little easier uh, towards the end of the video. You can check timestamps for that. But right now I'm just gonna type it in uh, assuming maybe that's the way you might try it first too. So there we go. I have my text typed in. Now let's just watch it and see how it goes. Now you do notice I fade the video in here. So we actually see the words on here before the video even starts. I might adjust the, the, the subtitle a little bit because I don't think I want to do that, but let's take a look. All right, check systems are go here. Systems are go there. Okay, so I'm gonna drag this in a little bit. Let me zoom in just a little. And I'm going to pull this in just a little bit. And that should be good like that. So let's see how that looks. All right, check. Systems are go here. Systems are go there. Guys, what's happening? So you can see we've got our subtitle text in there. Now, what if we don't like the placement of it, right? Because for me, in this particular video, it's kind of got the desk cutting right through it there. I... I don't really like the placement of it. I would rather it be a little bit lower. Now it's gonna depend on what kind of device you're watching on. Uh, when I've used this before, I noticed I moved it down and in some situations on some devices, it might be a little too low. So you wanna keep that in mind uh, as far as what device you're gonna be watching it on, test it out and make sure that it's working the way that you want it to. So selecting my clip again and jumping back into the inspector here, let's take a look at the rest of the options in this uh, caption section. And then we're going to see how we can adjust the text and, you know, move it, change the font, that kind of stuff. So we typed in our text right here. We're good to go there. We've got what we want. Now, right here, you have use track style. So you can set up one style for all of your subtitles, which I think generally is what you're going to want. You don't want different uh, styles for each piece of subtitle text, or maybe you do, I don't know. It depends on what you're doing, but I would say you probably want it all to be the same. So by leaving this checked on, you're going to be able to have all of the text be the same. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how you can set that in a second here. So the next section down here, we have add new previous and next. And down here, we have all of the subtitles that we've already created. For example, we only have one in here right now, but let's say I want to add in another one. I could go ahead and click add new. And now it's going to add another subtitle from wherever my playhead is. And you notice it did overwrite what we already had. So you got to be careful where you put your playhead when you go ahead and add in that subtitle. I'm just going to command or control Z and undo that real quick. Now, if I had a whole bunch of subtitles already in here, I had a whole list of them right here. We're going to be able to use the next and previous buttons, and that's going to jump our playhead to the next and the previous subtitle tracks that we might already have put in our video. And once we get a few more in here, you'll see what that looks like. So that'll be your whole list there of every subtitle that you have. Now in this area here, it gives you some information about the subtitle clips. The number is what order, right? One through whatever, how many, however many you might have. The next section is the time in and time out. So where on your timeline does that come in? Where does it go out, right? Your in points and out points, essentially. What does the caption say is the next section here. Whatever you want it to say and whatever you've typed in there, that's what's going to show up here. And the last column here is CPS, which stands for characters per second. So if you want to set Resolve's default settings, which I'll show you how to do in a second here, to be a certain number of characters that show up per second, you can set that. And then if it's over, it will turn red. And this column here, uh, the number will be red and it'll tell you what that number is. If it's okay, it'll be white like we see it here. So that is characters per second. So that's a rundown of the caption side. Now let's jump into style. And this is where we're going to set the whole style of our subtitle text 
for the entire video or all of the tracks. So come on back in the inspector here and oh, look at that. You can expand it. If you hit the little caption here, you double click it. That's going to open up this menu for you. Didn't know that. Look at that. Learn a little something new there. All right. So we want to jump into style. Go ahead and click on style. Now, this is going to be your font, your face size, the color size, your line spacing, uh, and other options here, the stroke, the color. You've got lots of different things you can do with your text to kind of make it stand out here. You've got transform. That's where is the text on the screen. We can move it around. Like I said, I want to move mine down a little bit in this particular clip. So if I wanted to do that, I'm going to come to the Y axis of the position here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it down a little bit. There we go. We repositioned that guy pretty easily. You can zoom in and zoom out if you want. You've got different anchor points. You can add a drop shadow to it. Uh, let's say, for example, I'm just going to make it like a gray. Let's uh, zoom in our video so we can see what this is looking like. And you just change the offset a little bit. Now it's pretty blurry there. If you don't want it to be blurred, you can drop that back. You know, you've got options here on different ways that you can do things. Obviously, this doesn't look good. I wouldn't do that. I'd probably leave it black. And if I had a white background, you could have your white text on the white background with the black shadow, you know, do that kind of stuff that can work out pretty good. And just to reset all that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset button right here. Zooming back out a little bit. So the next section here we have is background. Now we did talk about this on a quick tip Tuesday that I mentioned. Again, uh, I'll link to it up here and uh, I'll just throw a link in the description too, um, where I talk a little bit more about the backgrounds, the options there and you know how to use them a little bit. But basically you can turn it on, you can change the color, you can, uh, have an outline color to the background if you want. We just click on this here. If I make that a little bigger, you can see it can make a little box around it like that. It just depends on what style you want. But all these settings are going to set the default settings for a subtitle track clip, right? So however you want the text to look, pick all this stuff, set it up once, you're good to go. And at the end, say, hey, I decide I don't like this font. I want to change it. You could just come in here and change the style for the entire track once. You don't have to go through every piece of, uh, or every clip, every subtitle clip and change it. You don't have to do that. You can change it once, boom, it's gonna apply it to everything. You'll be good to go there. So that's pretty sweet. Now, one thing that I will say about the background here is that it seems like it's a little close to the text. I'm not 100% sure if you can adjust that, that distance from the edge of the text uh, you know, to the edge of the box there. So for example, you look like right here, right? If I zoom in on this, Let's get in there tight. Like there's not a lot of space there. Sometimes it feels a little too tight, but um, I don't, I have to look into it and see if there's other options to adjust that. But for now, I guess you just got to kind of, kind of deal with that, right? That is all the options of your style and how you can position uh, your subtitles. Once you set it up once, like I said, you're good to go. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off my background. So let's say I want to come over here and now I want to add in another subtitle track. So I'm going to zoom out and actually if I, I can come back to the caption portion here and if I do add new... Boom, it's going to drop in another one for me. Now, by default, it's adding in a three-second subtitle clip. So let's talk about how can we change our default settings that tell us or tell Resolve, actually, how long to make this clip once we dump it in. So to do that, we want to go into our project settings. Project settings down here, the little gear icon at the bottom. Click on that. Or you can always come on up to file up here, too, and uh, you got project settings right there. It's grayed out because I'm already in there. Project settings. And then down here, we've got subtitles. And you've got just three options here of default settings you can use for your subtitles. The first one, max characters per line. How many characters do you want per line? That includes, you know, your letters, your spaces. How many do you want to have in a line at most? And this is something that you want to think about because you don't want that text being too small on the screen where nobody can see it. And you don't want to have too much crammed in there. So, you know, think about that and how you want that to look and appear on your screen. The default looks like it's 30 or 60 here. Sorry, 60. Uh, I haven't changed any of these. I just going to leave them at the default. And that's probably going to be pretty good. But you know what? You can change them if you need to. The next one is minimum caption duration. So how long do you want these captions to be? How long is that clip when you first dump it in your timeline? Now, I think you're going to have to play with them a little bit, you know, make them a little longer, a little shorter. But what do you want that default to be? So in this case, it's three seconds. I'm going to go with that. It should work out to be okay. The last section here is maximum characters per second. Default is at 30. I'm going to leave it there because honestly, I don't know too much about what it should be, what it shouldn't be, but I'm sure they set it at 30 for some reason. So I'm going to leave that there. And if your characters per second exceeds 30, then over here in your inspector, you're going to see this number appear as red. So those are the couple of options that you have for default settings for your subtitle clips. So change them if you need to. If not, 
Just leave them at the default. That's what I'm going to do now. Just leave them default and just move ahead from here. So let's edit in another a subtitle clip here. So let me zoom in a little. So I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter. And this one I'm going to move up a little bit to where I'm talking next. And let's see what I say from there to about here. And then we'll try and get that typed in too. Guys, what's happening? It is 2022. All right, so we have, guys, what's happening? It's 2022. And let's see how this looks right from the beginning. All right, check. Systems are go here. Systems are go there. Guys, what's happening? It is 2022. If you are brand new to my... All right, so that's pretty good. It looks like it's coming in good. I'm going to add in a few more of these, and then I've got another cool tip for you on how you can attach or link the subtitle track to your video track in case you got to move things around a little bit. So we'll be back in a second. Let me add some more in here. So I added in a bunch more subtitles here. Let's watch it through once. You can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to show you how we can attach these uh, subtitle clips to the video clip. So that way, if we ever move the video clip, everything stays put and doesn't get all out of whack. Now, one quick thing I would mention, I would do your editing of your video track before you add in your subtitle. So make your cuts, get rid of the stuff you don't want. Don't waste your time trying to fill out subtitles for parts you're going to cut out anyway. You're just going to be wasting your time. So, all right, let's jump back in here. Check this out. And here's what we've got so far. All right, check. Systems are go here. Systems are go there. Guys, what's happening? It is 2022. If you are brand new to my channel, my name is Jay Yedlovsky, and here we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve. We give you tips. We give you tricks. We learn how to do all kinds of different things in Resolve. I do love me some audio. Got lots of good audio stuff if that's what you're looking for, but we talk about a little bit of everything here in Resolve. Okay, so that's looking pretty good so far. Everything seems to be popping up while I'm reading it. Now, you do kind of have to manually adjust the subtitles here so that they line up with where you're speaking. As far as I know, there's nothing that's going to automatically do that for you. So we've got them set up. That looks pretty good. Now, one thing I did want to mention, let's say, for example, you've got, you know, a, a, a clip here that's like this one. It's pretty long. Now, because of our default settings of 60 characters per line, it automatically puts in the return. So... You know, it'll read this first part and then it automatically put in the return. So if I select this up here, I didn't add a space right here. It just went down by itself. But here's another little tip for you, just in case maybe you had, uh, you know, a piece of text that was a little bit bigger for some reason or things just weren't fitting on there. Right. So check this out. If I select my clip here, I'm going to go ahead and select all of this. And now I'm just going to turn off the use track style so I can change just this clip individually, just so I can show you here. So if I make the whole thing bigger, you're like, oh, man, it don't fit there. What do I do? You can go in and make your returns manually. So if I come and let's say, I don't know, right here and I hit enter, now it'll drop everything down and that works out pretty good. So you can go through and manually do that. But I would recommend that you... Set your default settings so that you don't have to do that. Save yourself the time, save yourself the energy and the effort and the work of having to do that and just set that default setting for however long you want or however many characters you want. In this case, 60 is the default. That's what I would go with. It seemed to work out pretty good. Uh, that way you don't have to do all the returns and stuff. So just something to keep in mind while you're working through your subtitles here. All right, that said, now let's attach these subtitle clips to the video clip itself. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to select all these guys and select my video clip, select everything. If I right click, I can say link clips. And now you can see up here in the corner, we have the little link symbol. And that is gonna say, hey, DaVinci Resolve, make sure you link all these things together, right? So if I zoom out here and let's say I just wanna grab this and throw it down my timeline. And if, if I unselect it, I can grab it and move it around. And now that works out pretty good. Everything is linked together. It's going to stay together. And this is why also I said it's important to get your edit done before you add in your subtitles. Subtitles should be like, you know, your last step that you're going to throw in there at the end, you know. You don't want to go ahead and do that and then have to edit your video on top of that because that's a pain. You can delete individual clips and things like that if you need to, but save yourself the work. You know, plan it out and do it in a way that you don't make extra work for yourself because... Who wants to do extra work, right? Come on, right, right? And two, just to show you guys again in the inspector here, we've got a little more room. Let me expand this down. So now you can see that we have, mo since we have multiple subtitles on our video or on our timeline here, you can see they appear right here and they tell me the order that they're in. They give me the in points and the out points. They tell me what it says. And then it looks like for me, the uh, CPS is, it's all okay. I don't have any red numbers here, which would tell me it exceeds the threshold that was set that 30 uh, CPS. So 
I would say we're doing pretty good here. But you can go through and just click on any one of these guys, and you can edit them if you need to. You don't have to, uh, you know, go through, pick and find. You can just look through the one long list here, find what you need, go make the edits you need, and uh, it's pretty it's pretty handy to have all this just listed right out in the inspector for you. And also, like we mentioned before, the next and the previous, look, boom, 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 right through next, previous. So you've got the option to use that also if it's helpful for you. So just a few more things we want to cover about subtitles. We are going to go ahead and bring in a subtitle text file and show you how that works and how we can bring it into Resolve here. But before we do that, we're actually going to use what we've already created to do that. And in order to use that, we need to first export it from DaVinci Resolve. So there's different reasons on why you might want to export just a subtitle text file. One being maybe when you upload your video to something like YouTube or you know another uh, online service, you want the file to be separate so that they're not burned into the video. People have the option to turn them on and off, right? Maybe you know you don't need everybody to see the subtitles. Maybe you want to watch it. Maybe you don't. You want to have the options for viewers to turn that on and off. So by uploading it as a separate file, you're going to be able to turn it on and off. If we export our video and have these baked into the file, well, then you're kind of stuck. You know, you're not going to be able to uh, do anything with them. They're just burned in the video, just like any other image or video clip or whatever it is you might have in your in your project. So think about how you want it to be at the end of the day for your viewer when dealing with the subtitles. So first thing, let's talk about how do we export the subtitles into their own text file? You've got a few ways that you can do it. The first way that you can do it is come on up to file at the top here. We want to come down to export and then we've got subtitle. So go ahead and click on that. So that's going to go ahead and bring up a window asking you, where do you want to save this file? And if we look at the top here, we can notice that it's a .srt file. And right now the default is English subtitle because that's what my track was named. Now, if you named your track something different, you should see that name pop up here. I'm going to add a little more info to it just so I know what it is in my files here. Now, there are standards of how you need to name these files for uh, certain things. I think in the Resolve manual, it actually uh, says that Facebook needs it a certain way. I don't know if YouTube needs it a certain way. I'm going to double check that. And if it does, I'll put in a little clip about that next. But I'm going to go ahead and just label this uh, DaVinci Resolve English subtitle and just leave it at that. And if you do come down here, you do have some options. Again, I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it might look slightly different, but you should get these options too of different uh, ways that you can save the file. So you've got to just determine what you need for your particular project. So I'm just going to leave it on default here and I'm going to hit save. All right, so now I navigated to where that file saved and now it's a .srt file, which is basically a text file. So let's go ahead and open that up and check this out. And for me, I'm going to open with a text edit app here on Mac. You can use whatever you know text editor that you've got on your computer and it should open it up and it should look like this. Now it's a very basic text file, but the information that's in here is essentially what we saw in the inspector, right? Let's take a look at it. So we've got our numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the number clip, which corresponds to our clip number right over here in DaVinci Resolve. So the next line down here, we have our time code. Where's your in points and where's your out points? for this particular piece of subtitle text. And if we look over here in our uh, inspector in DaVinci Resolve, it's going to correspond to our time in and our time out. Next below that, we've got our text. Now it does have, you know, some other information there to tell it what to do, but right here, check systems are go here, systems are go there. And if we look in DaVinci Resolve, check systems are go there, here and systems are go there. It says the exact same thing. It's exactly what we put into DaVinci Resolve. It just exports it out into this text file that we can use and upload as a separate file, but it's got the time code and everything that you need in there for your subtitles to be lined up perfectly with your video once you upload it to something like YouTube. Now, if you wanted to make your own file, you could take this right here, and I'm actually gonna provide this for you. You can take this as a template and adjust it or modify it however you want. So, you know, you can change your, you know, your time code here to be wherever you want. You can type in the text that you want in between the options here, the, the, these B's type in whatever you want. And then when you bring it in resolve, everything should line up with your time code and how you want it to be. So I guess it just depends on, you know, how are you, how are you putting together your subtitles? Are you doing it in resolve live? Like I just did with the couple that we did, or do you, or do you have it all scripted out? Is everything already done? Maybe it's already typed up. Maybe it's a script, whatever it might be. And you could just put it in this format and it's quicker to do that and then dump it into Resolve. I don't know. You got to determine what works best for you. So we'll bring these back into Resolve in a second here and delete what we have just so you can see how that works. But for now, let's jump back into Resolve and talk about exporting our project 
with subtitles. So I'm going to jump over into the deliver tab, the little rocket icon down here, and let's talk about exporting subtitles. So I'm going to come up here and uh, I know that for me, I only have, I got the one track of subtitles. Let's zoom in. I'm going to drag my endpoint just right at the end here. Perfect. Looks good to me. Let's just go ahead and click on this. It's going to give us a 1080 export for our project. I'm going to pick a location and name it real quick. All right. So I named my file what I want it to be. Subtitle example. That works for me. All these settings here, I'm going to leave it the default. It's a preset I have to export in 1080. You're curious about that? Comment down below. I can drop a link to a video uh, about that if you're interested. So scroll down to the bottom and we have subtitle settings right here. Go ahead and open that up. Now under here, you see export subtitle. And if you do not have this checked on right here, this little box, you'll get no subtitles in your export. Now we can see them over here. We see them on our screen here, but when you export, if this, bo if this box isn't checked on, you're not going to get any subtitles. It'll just come out like your video with no subtitles. So what we want to do is go ahead and turn on the export subtitle. And now we've got a few options here on what do you want to happen with your subtitles when you export them. So under format here, we can export as a separate file, which in this case, export as an SRT. That's the same file that we just exported in the edit page under the file menu, but it saves you a step. You don't have to do it, you know, twice, like once before you leave the program, once at the end, when you render it, it can do it all here for you at the same time. So that's pretty convenient. If you click on here, you do have some other options. Now it depends on what you're doing, who you're submitting to, as far as what kind of file format they might need. So if it's YouTube, Vimeo or Netflix, I don't know, whatever it might be, make sure you do your research and find out exactly what you need for your subtitles so that everything's going to work the way that you want it to. For me, I'm just going to leave it as an SRT right now. And then with this setting here as exporting as a separate file, down here we've got include following subtitle tracks in the export. Now, remember we made two subtitle tracks, right? We have one that's in English and let's say we wanted to do, you know, a couple other languages. We can have additional subtitle tracks in different languages and you have the option to export one or more of them at a time when you export your project. So that's pretty sweet and pretty convenient. You only have to do this once. It's not like doing the same thing over and over and over again, right? So for me, I'm only gonna do the English subtitle export, my English subtitle track, right? Because my other one, I didn't put anything in it because I don't really know any other languages. So that's what we're gonna go with for now. And then if this is how you want it, you'd hit add to render queue, boom, render it out, and you'd be good to go. And just to show you, I'm gonna hit render and show you what you end up with. So once your file is rendered, I've rendered mine out. You notice we have an MP4 file, which was how I wanted my video to export right here. And then we have a separate subtitle file. So we can upload both of these to say YouTube, for example, and then you can get your subtitles on your video. Because if I just double click on my video here and we play through a little bit of this, if I just come ahead a little here, you see there's no subtitles on there, right? No subtitles because they're in a separate file which will enable a user on YouTube, for example, to turn those subtitles on and off. So you've got both files and you can go ahead and upload them wherever you want. Now, jumping back into Resolve here under export subtitle again, different options. Again, we can burn into the video. So if I click on that, then it's just going to burn it right into the video, right? So I'm going to export this, show you what the file looks like. Again, save your settings. I'm going to add it to the render queue. Uh, let's just replace what we got. That's fine. And I'll export it and show you what you get. So now for this one, I did the burn in. I actually did change the name of it to just burn in. And all I got was that one file with the subtitles burned into it. And if we check this out here, I got our file. Here's the subtitles down here at the bottom. You can't turn them on. You can't turn them off. You can't do anything with them. They're just there. They're baked into the video, just like, you know, well, an image or any other video clip might be a piece of text, whatever it is. They're burned in there. You can't do anything with them. So that is how you would burn them into the file so that people have to watch them. They have no option to turn it on and off. Coming back into Resolve, export subtitle again. Our other option is as embedded captions. Now, when you use the embedded captions, what it's going to do is take the track that you select and it's going to embed it into a metadata layer within that file. So now I got to take a look at the manual here, but it basically says that there's support for CEA 608 closed captioning within MXF OP 1A and QuickTime files. And you can choose the subtitle format from the codec pop-up menu that appears. So for me, I'm not going to use that, but maybe that's an option that if you want to embed the data into your file, 
You can use that. Again, you need to check with whatever, you know, uh, company or service that you're working with to see, is this an option? Do I embed my subtitles? Do I upload them as a separate file? You've got to look at wherever you're sending them in to really determine what's the best option uh, that you should use when trying to get your subtitles to be uploaded and, you know, exported along with your video. So keep that in mind. Definitely always check wherever you're sending them in and make sure you're doing it the right way the first time. So that is exporting in a nutshell, how to get your subtitles out of Resolve, how to use them. And one last thing that I do want to talk about is how to bring in that text file into Resolve. If you've already got everything listed out in like, you know, an Excel file or a, a numbers file or something, you have it all listed out, maybe even just a text file, whatever it is. We're going to now jump back into the edit tab and I'm going to delete the subtitles that we have. And then I'm going to bring in that text file that we took a look at and exported and see how it comes in and lays on top of our video. So let's go do that. All right, back in Resolve, jumping into the edit tab. I'm going to come out here. I want to clear my in points and out points. So I'm just going to go clip. Nope. I'm going to go mark. I'm going to go clear in and out. Now, if I select all my clips here, everything's linked. So I'm going to unlink these by choosing link clips and let's delete our subtitles. Boom, gone. So if you had a separate text file, you do need to go ahead and create your subtitle track. Now let's go ahead and bring in that file. So in order to bring them in, you need to come in your media pool. So I'm gonna close my effects library, open my media pool, jump in my example folder here. I'm just gonna come in my media pool and I'm gonna right click. And now we wanna do import subtitle right here. So go ahead and click on that. Once you do that, you're gonna get this window right here, which is gonna say, where are the files that you wanna bring in or the file I wanna bring in? Now I'm gonna use the export subtitle file that we just exported in the deliver tab. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna hit open. So now it drops it right here into the media pool. We have English subtitle, and that's the name of our file that we brought in. Now, if you already have a subtitle track created, you also have to do is click on your subtitles, drag them and drop them down into your timeline. And it's gonna drop them right into that track for you. And notice that it decompressed or decomposed all of our clips. So now I can click on my clip. Boom, look, we have our whole list of everything right here. And just as we did before, it's just brought in from that SRT file and it all just shows up right here for us in Resolve. Super easy, super convenient. So once you drop them in, they should match up and fall into the right spot. But if they don't for some reason, then you may need to adjust them a little bit. You can always select them all, you know, zoom in. And if I need to bump it back a little bit or it's a little off, I can use my uh, comma and period keys, you know, to bump it frame by frame a little bit just so that it's exactly where you want it to be. Now, if you started right at the very beginning of your video with your subtitle track, boom, no problem. Just drag it right to the beginning of, of the subtitle track here in Resolve, and you should be good to go. But you may need to make little tweaks. Not sure, it depends on your clip and how you bring it in and all that, but this is how you could just take that file, bring it right into Resolve, and boom, you're good to go. Just drop it right onto your timeline. Now, some tips and tricks. Now, when you're uploading to YouTube, you can add these subtitles right on YouTube. And actually, YouTube does a pretty good job of auto-generating these subtitles by themselves. I've gone through and looked at some of the ones generated on my videos, and I gotta be honest, they're, they're pretty accurate. They do a good job. But one of the other things that you could try is if you get your video all situated, then you put your phone next to it, and you have your phone record and say, uh, you know, I'm on an iPhone here, so maybe I go into the text app. I hit the uh, listen button, you know, the little microphone here on your phone, put it down, and I play my video. And then the phone translates everything into text for me. That could eliminate some time that it might take you to, uh, you know, type everything in and, you know, have to go through, stop the video, listen, type it in, all that. And if you're like me, and you're from Jersey, and you talk fast, and probably too much sometimes, that's a lot of typing, right? That's a lot of words you might have to get in there and do. So that's one option of something that might be able to help you out. Now, there are other services out there online that you can send your video to. They'll, you know, put, they'll create subtitles for you. I don't look into any of those. I mean, for me and what I'm doing here on YouTube, I think Google and, you know, YouTube itself does a pretty good job of coming up with the subtitles for me. But for the most part, I'm not going through and, you know, doing the detail work of creating the subtitles. I'm not making a Netflix movie here. I'm not doing anything uh, all that super cool. Although, hey, YouTube's cool, right? YouTube's cool. For me, you know, YouTube does a great job of coming up with those captions. Now, sometimes I'll go back, I'll take a look at them. And if there's things that aren't correct, I'll fix it there. But if you need to export separate files, you need your SRT files, you can upload those, uh, you know, right to YouTube, export them from Resolve, upload them to YouTube. That can work out just fine. But you've got lots of different options on ways that you can work with the subtitles here in DaVinci Resolve. I tell you, Resolve is just so robust, man. There is just so much that you can do in here. It's, I mean, it blows my mind how 
deep this program is. I don't think I'll ever know everything that this program can do, and I still have so much to learn. So, that is subtitles in a nutshell here. We're learning more about DaVinci Resolve here in 2022, talking about a little bit of YouTube, growing YouTube channels, and gear stuff, because we all love some gear stuff, right? So, if you are into any of that, please hit that little subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of the community. With that said, guys, this video is done. If you have questions on subtitles, comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'll try and look it up. And if I still don't know the answer, well, we'll ask around a little bit and see if somebody else knows it. Thank you guys for watching. It has been great to make this first video here in 2022. Super excited for this year. And uh, with that said, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Peace. Hey. Oh, you got on, you on break? 10 minutes for snack. 10 minutes for snack. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we can't really see you because my camera's facing that way. There you are. I'm just right in the middle of a, can you get yourself a snack or what do you want? Don't know. You don't know? No. Apples? No. Something healthy? No. Please? <laughs> Hi, camera. Yep. That's it. Whole world. Whole world. Did I mess up your video? Uh, well, you're kind of right in the middle of it, but that's okay. I'll just, uh... Pause, edit, and uh, you know, it'll be like you never even showed up. <laughs> hey, like that. All right, why don't we go get your snack? Let me pause all this stuff and then we'll go get your snack. Okay. Time's kid interruption. Be right back. Hold that thought.